Scorecard IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm here with Brian the Lion Rose. Brian, before we talk about the huge fight announcement, man, look at the sunshine, man. You must be, how's life? You must be loving it. Oh, it's brilliant. Great news, great weather. Um, be even better weather where, where I'm fighting. <laughs> yeah, well, you're, you're fighting in Spain. Huge, huge announcement uh, this morning when I, when I opened up my Instagram and I seen it and uh, Kieran, Kieran uh, Farrell tagged me in a post. Sergio Martinez in September in Madrid. Now, former unified world champion, fought some of the best fighters out there at that, in that generation, in my generation, in your generation. I mean, wow, what a fight, man. You must be over the moon with this one. Oh, I, I'm over the moon, you know. I've had some hard luck recently, as you probably know. Uh, we've spoke to about that. And I've had a nightmare trying to get fights, um, try to get the fights that I wanted. Um, you know, we had, we had this Scott Fitzgerald fight penciled in, but we couldn't get contracts off him again, so there's no guarantees. Um, and I can't, I can't put my life on hold waiting for Scott Fitzgerald. I, I just can't do it. So uh, we negotiated with Sergio Martinez's team and um, came and got it done within within a week. So it just goes to show um, that, that fights can be made quickly and, and done. And I mean, I've signed the contracts already, so it's on. You know, I can't wait. You've got a smile on your face there when you said, I can't wait, man. Like, like I said to you, Sergio Martinez, we've, we've seen him as a former world champion. He had his last fight, well, his last loss before his retirement was against Court in 2014, but he has came back last year. He had two, two wins last year, uh, even at the ripe old age of 45, 46, and he got two knockouts. So he, he's back in the win column. He's got two knockouts. How dangerous do you think Sergio Martinez, even at the age of 46? Well, 46 now. He's dangerous, you know. Um, listen, take the year, I'll take the 10 years off him, but look at the fighter he was and look at the fighter I was, you know, compared to what I achieved, compared to what he achieved, he, you know, he, he's up here. He was the best, he was P4P, best in the world at one point, you know. Um, he, he, he was pound for pound best. So, um He's very dangerous. One, they say, don't they? One thing that ever le never leaves you is, is your power, and he's definitely powerful. You know, he's still got that uh, lovely backhand. Um, so, you know, I've got to make sure I'm I'm ready and uh, prepare for for the best. Uh, Martinez, you know, we we all know that he's not going to be at his best, but at the same time, he's a very very dangerous fighter. Like I said. He has fought some of the best, but even Miguel Cotto lost, uh, you know what I mean? He's fought Chavez Jr., he's fought Kelly Pavlik. Kelly Pavlik, we all know, was a great fighter back in the day as well. But every single, it was like, I think we did fight Dan Barker, Matthew Macklin and Martin Murray. Even though Martin Murray was unlucky not to get the win out in Argentina, he's not lost yeah. to a Brit yet, Brian. He's not lost to a Brit yet. No, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. He hasn't. So I could be the first one, you know, like you say, even at the ripe age of 46. Yeah, well, that's, that, that, what, what kind of added boost does this give to you, you and, your, and your training leading up this fight? I mean, like I said to you, he's, he's old enough to be your dad. He's got 20 years on you. So he is old enough to be your dad. But you mentioned the, the accolades that he's done throughout his boxing career. He, he, yeah. He's not coming off the mega court loss and jumping into a fight with Brian Rose. He has had two fights. Uh, out in Spain last year. He's got the win by knockouts. I mean, he's a huge name in boxing. You, you, so what kind of added uh, fire does it add, uh, this give you in your belly in this training camp? I mean, there wasn't many other fights I could get up for. I, I only, I, honestly, I said to Kim, I said, the only fight I can get up for is the Scott Fitzgerald fight. But never did I believe I'd be sharing the ring with someone like Sergio Martinez. So that's give the fire in my belly again. You know, I'll train like this, like it's for a world title, because I know um, when I win this fight, it'll propel me. You know, don't get me wrong. It's an absolute honour honor to share the ring with someone so good. You know, it's almost like I don't deserve it, you know, because he, um, he, was, he was such a great fighter. But at the same time, I'm going to come back with a win. You know, I am going to do something that no Brit's done, and that's and that's win. What does a win do for your career then? What, what does this does this put you back in sort of like not maybe not world title contention, but puts you in a position where you can maybe call out the the, the bigger names in in the division? Do you know what I mean? So what does yeah, like you say, 
I mean, like you say, it doesn't get me in world title contention, but who knows? It might, you know, it definitely gets people's, um, it, it definitely gets noticed, you know, if it, it doesn't matter if he was, I mean, he's, he's 46, it wouldn't matter if he was 66. If you beat Sergio Martinez, it's a great win. Mm. Um, so when I win, um, it propels me and it propels me into, I'm back in the driving seat. I can start saying, listen, it's in my hands now. Scott Fitzgerald has to fight me. Mm. You know, um, the, these other fighters have to fight me. But who knows? I, I might not even have to fight them. <laughs> Beat Sergio Martinez, then I might be um, for fighting a final eliminate for a world title again. But that, that being said, I know how much you want the, the, the Scott Fitzgerald fight. I mean, there's that Blackpool Preston rivalry. It's huge for, for the, the Northwest where you are. It's a huge, huge fight. Do you know what I mean? So, after this fight, you, you keep saying, when I win, when I win. So when you win against Sergio Martinez, is that the fight you'll be calling out next? Is that the fight that you'll be hoping can get signed next, Scott Fitzgerald? Of course, yeah. I, you know what? I've, I've tried everything I, I, I could um, without coming across too desperate. I tried everything. I, in fact, at times, I come across desperate. I wanted that fight so much, and there's not much more that we could do our side I mean, Kieran showed me messages to Matt Room saying, listen, put a contract in place mm -hmm. for Saturday. Otherwise, we're going to be talking to... Well, he didn't say the name, but he said we'll be talking to... Negotiating with another team. If you can't get that contract put, put in place for October, then we're going to, we're going to go on and, and take this other fight. So we've done everything, everything we can. And for me, they're not, they're not serious about that fight if they can't put a contract in place. It takes 10 minutes to put a contract in place. So um, I've done everything I can. But yeah, if I win this fight, then someone like that has to fight me. There's no reason why he shouldn't. People can't say, oh, he doesn't deserve it. You know, why does he deserve the Scott Fitzgerald fight? Well, I deserve it because I just fucking beat Sergio Martinez. That's why I deserve it. Mm -hmm. Do you know if Scott wants to fight? What's the stumbling block here? Is it Scott? Is it his team? Is it Eddie Hearn? Matchroom? What's the hold-up, do you think? I don't think for a minute it's Eddie Hearn or Matchroom. I think they want the fight, but Scott Fitzgerald is so unreliable. They're probably not in a position to put contracts in place because they know that two weeks from a fight, he could pull out. And I can't, I can't be in that position. You know, it's not good. It's not good for my career. You know, if I trained up until... October and he pulled out. My my career's over. I can't. I won't get myself up for any other fight. Mm. And it's not good for my mental health. That's the reason I suffered. You know, people pulling out of fights and um, saying they're going to fight. There's contracts put in place, and then next thing, I've trained, lost a load of money, and um, I've not had a fight or I, or been given any money back to make that up. So um, I've no doubt Sergio Martinez is a man of his word. He's a businessman. He's been at the top. There's no way he's going to pull out of the fight. You do share a common opponent in, in Matthew Macklin. Uh, would you be texting Matthew to get some pointers on how to beat him? <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm Matt Macklin's mate, and but Bobby knows him better than me. So, yeah, definitely. Um, I'd certainly be asking the advice of someone like Macklin because he's a, he was a great fighter. Um, Martin Murray, I could ask Martin Murray too. So, uh, my my Murray, like you say, should have should have got the decision really. So uh, I've sparred lots of rounds with Martin Murray as well. So um, he's probably the best person to go to. So yeah, I could ask for pointers, and uh, it's not a bad idea, that mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, listen, I'm all good. I'm here to help. But for you, for you, <laughs> this this boxing game is a fickle old game. Like there was that disappointment about the Amal Williams fight falling through out in Vegas and stuff like that. I knew how upset and sort of like gutted you were not to get that fight but like I say boxing's a crazy old game and just a few months later you're fighting Sergio Martinez uh, what, what's the goal for you in boxing now I mean you did mention that you're 36 now but what, what is the goal for you now in boxing is it to still become a champion whether it be European champion world champion British champion again what, what's the end goal for you now um, I mean Becoming a world champion looks very unlikely. I'm a realist, you know. I know my level, and um, I know I had my chance to win a world title and probably never come again because I'm a realist. But you, who knows? You know, you never know. Um, something might spark. You know, I might be Martinez and something might just be there again, you know. Uh, but he's still in here. I've still got I've still got the heart of a lion, and, and I train like I trained when I was 
20 years old, you know, he, he's mad. The feeling I get when I'm training and um, I do work hard in the gym still, you know, I'm not just in this for money. And that, I've said that from the start, I'm in this for big fights. I don't want any regrets. So I don't want to be 50 years old going to my kids, oh, you know what, I should have carried on. Because you know what, if I'd have retired six months ago, which I quite easily could have, I wouldn't be in this position now, would I? So um, I'm just buzzing. I've carried on. I've knuckled down. And you know what? I, I do believe that that good things come to good people. You know, mm. I've had hard luck. Um, the Amo Williams fight and then, and then the other the other Nikita BB. Mm. You know, th these contracts were signed and I was promised these fights and they never come off. And these were fights that I trained five, six weeks for after Spain and they never come. So that's a lot of money lost. And now I'm in a position where I'm fighting Sergio Martinez, and um, I'm just so happy that I've 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 stuck to my word and and, and knuckled down in the gym and and now got the opportunity that I deserve. Definitely, I want to have a quick word on 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 Kieran Farrell. I mean, he's probably the hardest working man in boxing at this moment in time, and the, the guy just never stops. Whether it be managing his fighters, promoting shows out in Spain, to training young fighters in his gym. Uh, I mean, the guy doesn't sleep, it seems. I mean, just quick word, what, what, yeah. you mentioned that it took him a week to get this fight signed for you. I mean, he, he's working hard for you, isn't he? Yeah, well, but the poor lad was, was on holiday. He was on holiday with his family when he was sorting all this out. I was like, when I tried to ring him, it was um, like a foreign ringtone. I was like, you on holiday? He was like, yeah, I went, mate, I'll leave you to it. He was like, no, listen, we need to get this sorted. So he does work hard. And you know what? He's still making sacrifices as a manager now, not just, you know, he made a lot of sacrifices as a boxer, but he's making a lot of sacrifices as a manager too, you know. Um, he's got kids. His wife must get pissed off him because he's always on the phone. Uh, but he gets he gets deals done, you know. Um, people think he's a bit crazy. Well, he is crazy. Let's have it right. He's crazy. But um, he, he people from the outside must think he's mental. They see him with these Bermuda shorts on, flip-flops. But you know what? He's a businessman and gets shit done. He mm. does get stuff done. So um, I, I can't thank Kieran enough. And I was going to wait till the end to thank him. But yeah, I've, I can't thank Kieran enough um, for, for, for getting the fight. He promised me a big fight after Spain and that's what he's done. He's got me another one in Spain. What a guy, man. I, I, unless I've got a lot of time for Kieran, man. He, he's, we text often and we, we speak to each other often. So, I mean, just what he, he's doing for boxing at this moment in time for, for his young fighters that maybe not get on the big shows and stuff like that. He's working hard for them. And he's got a show in August, which is good to see as well in Manchester, I believe. So good luck to him. But you were going to leave that to the end to thank Kieran. So this is near the end, but I do have one final question for you then, Brian. What can we expect from Brian at the Lion Rose against Sergio Martinez in September out in Madrid? Well, you know what? I've never been one to say I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna get in there and do this, do that, and not knock him out. But I, all I can promise you is I'll come back with a win. You know, I, I'll grind him down, I'll grind him down, and I'll get to him eventually, and I'll come back with a win. I'm gonna do everyone in Blackpool proud, everyone in Britain proud. Um, I just can't wait for the opportunity. I can't wait to be six weeks six weeks into camp, feeling great about myself again, and um, can't wait for the opportunity. Well, listen, good luck, man. I might even try and get a wee sneaky trip to Spain to come and watch the fight, to be honest. Oh, you look, mate. i seen you in Vegas when uh, Tyson Fury was there. You love it, don't you? You love getting away. <laughs> I'm Josh Taylor going <laughs> the boxing here. I'm a boxing slag, so I love it, man. I just love boxing. So. <laughs> if, I, if I get this, oh, you great, mate. Be... Honestly, anyone in your position would, you know, can't blame you, mate. Thanks, mate. Thanks, man. Listen, I'm going to speak to Kieran, man, see if he can get me, like, a... Uh, a ticket to Spain, man. Why not? Let's do it. Yeah, definitely. I'd love you there, mate. Yeah, listen, Brian, hope your training camp goes well. I mean, like I said, it's a great opportunity for yourself and uh, good luck, man. Fingers crossed. I might, hopefully I do get out there. Who knows? But if I don't, good luck and uh, I'll speak to you after the fight. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks for the chat, mate. I appreciate it. Anytime, Brian, man. Anytime. Stay safe, brother. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Yeah.